differentiation. Sounds difficult, but really you've been doing it all along this whole time taking the derivative. Let me show you the tips and tricks you need to know to make implicit differentiation simple for you. Be sure to subscribe below and share this video with another friend taking calculus. Implicit differentiation is just taking the derivative of the y variable, which you've been doing all along, but haven't really had to think about, you just do it. So let me show you what this means. Let's start with this example and just go ahead and take the derivative. So when you take the derivative, this becomes y prime equals, the two comes out front, so three times two, x to the first. So y prime equals six x. So you have been doing this all along. When you take the derivative of y, you have been writing down y prime. And that's exactly what we're gonna keep on doing. Anytime you see y, you have to multiply by y prime, just like you've been doing here all along. The reason we need to do this, for equations that include y within the equation, not just a y equals problem. For example, you have this equation, right? Hopefully you recognize this is an equation of a circle. So it wants us to find the derivative of this equation. We're gonna go through and find the derivative. So the derivative of x squared is 2x plus the derivative of y squared. You're going to treat it just like x. So the two is gonna come out front. So 2y, but now we need to multiply by y prime, just like you had in any other equation, equals the derivative of 25 is zero. Now the only thing you have to do is solve for y prime. Now it's just a bunch of algebra getting that guy by itself. So the first thing we're gonna do, let's move our 2x to the other side. So now we've got 2y, y prime equals negative 2x. Then to get rid of the 2y here, we're gonna divide it away. Right, and then hopefully what you will see is that our twos will drop out, right? And this goes ahead and drops out. And we're left with y prime equals negative x over y. So that's how you do implicit differentiation. You're still taking the derivative like you have before. You're multiplying y by y prime, and then you just solve for y prime. Let's try another problem. So now, what if they want you to find the second derivative, all right? So we have the first derivative, and we have a fraction, which means we're gonna have to use quotient rule, low d high minus high d low all over low low. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing I'm gonna do is this is my high piece, and the derivative of my high piece is gonna be negative one. I'm gonna write that in. This is my low piece. The derivative of my low piece is just y prime. Right, every time you take the derivative of y, you wrote y prime. So, let's do it. So, low, so, all right, low. Low is y. d high, derivative of my high part is negative one, minus high, which is negative x, putting that in parentheses so I don't mess up my negatives here, times the derivative of my low piece, which is y prime, all over low low, y squared. Now we're gonna simplify. So, so far we have negative y in the numerator plus negative times negative becomes positive xy prime all over y squared. This is our second derivative that we're looking for. So in this problem, we're not gonna solve for y prime. We're gonna replace it because we know what y prime is. Right, our y prime was negative x over y. That is from this piece right here. I'm just gonna take that guy down here and I'm gonna be plugging him in. That's shoot, right there. So we're gonna take him out and plug in that fraction. So now we have our second derivative is gonna equal negative y 
plus x, I'm plugging in negative x over y, all over y squared. Now that doesn't look very fun, okay? All I'm gonna do is take that y out of the denominator and bring him up and use a negative exponent. So we're gonna have negative y plus x times x, oops, that's gonna be a minus, isn't it? Positive times a negative, okay, it's a minus. X times X is X squared, Y to the negative first power, that's how I get him to come up top, all over Y squared. So this right here would be your second derivative for that problem. It looks ugly, it looks messy, but it is what it is and you can do it. All right, again, we have an equation that has y mixed into the equation. We're gonna go through and take the derivative. So, oh, look at this. Product rule. So we have our f piece and our g piece. So product rule, derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second. Here we go. Derivative of the first, two x times g, which is just y, plus f times the derivative of g, which is just y prime. Very good. Plus, now we're doing this piece. The two comes out front, two stays, three comes out front, subtract an exponent. Oh, but we, we took the derivative of y, so you must multiply by y prime equals zero, because the derivative of a number is always zero. All right, now let's simplify. So we have 2xy plus x squared y prime plus 6y squared y prime equals zero. So the idea here is we need to get y prime by itself. So the first thing I'm gonna do is move anything that doesn't have a y prime to the other side. So I'm going to subtract my 2xy to both sides. So now we have x squared y prime plus 6y squared y prime equals negative 2xy. The next step here is we want to pull out this y prime. That's why you want to get everything that doesn't have a y prime to the other side. So now I can pull that y prime out and then divide by the rest and get rid of it. So I'm gonna pull that y prime out front. Here I'm left with x squared plus six y squared equals negative two xy. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and divide everything by this x squared plus six y squared. So we have y prime equals negative 2xy all over x squared plus 6y squared. And that, my friends, is your derivative. Again, it doesn't really look simpler and it looks kind of messy, but it's totally something you can do. Now let's say they wanted you to find an equation of the tangent line with this function. So hopefully you remember that if they want the equation of the tangent line, your derivative is your slope of your tangent line. Hopefully you remember that. If not, check out one of my other videos. But your derivative is the slope of your tangent line. So let's go ahead and put this into an equation. So they want us to write the equation of a tangent line. The first thing I'm gonna do is write the equation of a line. Great, and they already gave us our xy values. How easy is this? So now we just need to plug our derivative into our slope with those xy values. Our xy values are one and two. So y minus two equals, I'm gonna leave the slope blank, x minus one. So this is the equation of the tangent line we're gonna plug into. Now all we need to do is use the derivative we just found and plug in our xy values to put in the spot for our slope. So remember, our derivative was negative two xy, over x squared plus 6y squared. And we just have to plug in the points one, two. So I'm gonna go through here. 
And I'm going to plug in a 1 for my x, a 2 for my y, and then at the bottom, a 1 for my x and a 2 for my y. So that's going to give us negative 4 in the numerator. And in the denominator here, we have 2 squared, which is 4. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 1 is 25. So negative 4 over 25. So now I can come up here and take out my, there we go, and I can stick in my negative 4 over 25. And there is your equation of the tangent line. All right, again, we have another equation where y is intermixed in the equation. So just remember, when you take the derivative of y, you have to multiply by y prime. So, oh man, we got the product rule again. So here's f and here's g, and guess what? We've got f and g over here as well. All right, here we go. Derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times derivative of the second. I'm doing this piece right here first. So derivative of the first to x times the second plus the first times derivative of y is y prime. Now, plus, now I'm going to do this part. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second. Whew. Okay, derivative of the first is just going to be 3. Excellent. Times y plus the first times derivative of the second, which would just be y prime. Excellent. Now this last piece would just be minus 1 and it equals 0. The first thing I'm going to do is underline everything that does not have a y prime in it because everything that does not have a y prime in it is going to get moved to the other side. This guy does not have a y prime, he does not have a y prime, and neither does this piece. I'm going to take all of those pieces and I'm going to subtract them or add them all to the other side and rewrite. This piece stays x squared y prime and this piece stays plus 3xy prime equals, I subtracted this guy negative 2xy to the other side, I moved 3y, subtracted him to the other side, and I added one to the other side, okay? Hopefully you can see that. I did, I did it in one step, but I moved everything, either added it or subtracted it, moved it to the other side that did not have a y prime. So now over here, guess what I'm gonna do? Yep, I'm gonna pull that y prime out. So this y prime, I'm gonna pull him out front. So y prime times x squared plus 3x equals, and this piece just gets copied right down, minus 3y plus 1. Now I'm just going to divide this piece away. So if you want to rewrite it, you can. So y prime would now equal negative 2xy minus 3y plus 1 all over x squared plus 3x. And there is your derivative. All right, derivative is going to be 3x squared minus 3y squared y prime, because we're taking the derivative of y, equals, oh, look at this, product rule, fg, derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second. So f prime is just going to be 6 times g plus f g prime derivative of y is just y prime. So the first thing we need to do is get y prime on the same side of the equation, take everything that doesn't have y prime on it, move it to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to do that in one step. So I am going to, since this guy's already negative, I'm going to add him to the other side, and then I'm going to subtract this guy to the other side in one step. So see if you follow me here. So I will have 3x, he stays the same. I moved my 6y to the other side, so he becomes negative. Equals, I'm adding my 3y squared y prime, and I'm leaving my 6xy prime. Now I can go ahead and take out my y primes, factor those out, 
So I will have 3x squared minus 6y equals y prime, 3y squared plus 6x. And then I can go ahead and divide that out. Right, we're going to divide by this piece. So as you can see, these cancel, right? So your y prime whoop, equals that. Now if you wanted, you could pull a 3 out of both numerators and simplify that down. Now I'm sure you're all very thrilled to do implicit differentiation with trig, right? I mean, who doesn't love trig? Okay, so here we go. What are we going to do here? Look at that inside piece of sign. So first of all, we're doing chain rule. And inside chain rule, we've got a product rule. Uh, not fun, right? All right, here we go. First of all, you have to label your outside piece. Sign is going to be my outside piece. So when we do chain rule, if you don't know how to do chain rule, make sure you check my video on how to do chain rule. Derivative of the outside piece. So derivative of sine is cosine. You're going to leave your inside piece. Then you multiply by the derivative of your inside piece. And of course, our inside piece here is a product rule. So derivative of f prime g plus f g prime, right? So derivative of f is going to be 2x times g y squared plus f x squared g prime, 2y y prime. Don't forget that y prime equals 1. Derivative of x is just 1. So the first step is just getting the y prime by itself, right? So our cosine piece here is connected to this other piece by multiplication. we got to undo doing division. So I'm going to divide both pieces by this cosine squared, I'm sorry, by this cosine x squared y squared. So I'm going to leave this big piece here, 2x y squared plus x squared 2y y prime equals 1 over cosine of x squared y squared. So here's my thought. If we do that, because that's my initial thought, I'm going to have to subtract this part away, then over here divide by that part. So I'm going to have a fraction inside a fraction, which is no good. So we're going to take a step back and try a different strategy. So I'm going to take this out, and we're going to try something else to maybe make this work a little bit better. I'll be honest, I don't want to do this, but I think it's the better way to solve the problem. You're going to take this piece here, and you're going to distribute it to each of those pieces. All right, here we go. So you're going to have cosine of x squared y squared times 2xy squared plus cosine of x squared y squared, that should be in parentheses, times x squared 2y y prime equals 1. Now, when we move things over, we're going to take this piece right here and we're going to move him over to the other side. Seeing what's happening now? So I'm going to leave. This piece is what's staying. So the cosine x squared y squared x squared 2y y prime, right, equals... 1 minus, and this piece here in blue is what I'm moving over, cosine x squared y squared times 2xy squared. Whew. The only saving grace is that all this over here is all connected by multiplication. So I can just take this piece right all in here and divide it to the other side. So we're going to divide out this piece. So we will be left with 
y prime equals, I'm capping the blue piece down. So I'll put that in blue so you know where that's coming from. Cosine x squared y squared 2xy squared all over, and now this part here in pink, all but the y prime, cosine x squared y squared times x squared 2y. And nothing else can cancel because of this one minus this whole piece. So this whole ugly mess is your derivative. All right, derivative of y is y prime, plus derivative of sine y is going to be cosine y, y prime equals derivative of x is 1. So now what we need to do is we need to pull our y primes out. So it'll be y prime. There is a 1 left here. Don't forget about that. Plus cosine of y equals 1. So now the good part here is all I needed to do is divide this parenthesis piece to the other side. That means y prime is going to equal 1 over 1 plus cosine of y. And this then will be your first derivative. But of course it's not going to be that easy because they're going to ask for your second derivative. So now they want you to find the second derivative. You have a fraction, which means a quotient rule, which means low D high minus high D low or over low low. Whew. All right, so this is our high piece, right? Derivative of the high piece, whoa, this is going to be nice, that's zero. Derivative of our low piece, okay, this is our low piece. Derivative of one is zero. Derivative of cosine is negative sine y y prime, right? We can't forget that y prime piece. So, second derivative, low, 1 plus cosine of y. d high, derivative of high is 0, minus high, 1, derivative of low part, negative sine y, y prime, all over 1 plus cosine y whole quantity squared. Now, as we simplify, the nice thing is, is this whole piece drops out, because that's a zero. So we have a negative and a negative. We have positive sine y, y prime, all over one plus cosine y squared. So now what we need to do is we need to take this y prime piece and we need to plug in what y prime was. So we gotta go back up and see what y prime was. Our y prime piece from up here, we're gonna plug in right there, which was one over one plus cosine y. So this is our second derivative. Gonna rewrite, we got sine y, and then we have one over 1 plus cosine y, because that's replacing our y prime, all over 1 plus cosine y, the whole quantity is squared. Now I know we have a fraction inside our fraction, but these pieces in the numerator are connected by multiplication, which really means that we can take this fraction piece right here, and he can go down there. So you can rewrite this problem as sine of y all over 1 plus cosine y quantity cubed. And this would be your second derivative. I hope this video helped you understand that implicit differentiation is something you've actually already been doing, but the y has always been on one side of the equation. Now that the y is inside the equation and intermixed with the x values, you just have to remember to multiply by y prime anytime you take the derivative of y. 
Hope this video has been helpful. Be sure to subscribe below and share with somebody else you know who's taking calculus. I disobeyed my own rule. I didn't multiply by y prime, so we're starting over. Yay, we've got more y's in our equation.